hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be doing a keepa tutorial so this is probably one of my most requested videos so i'm happy to be here to be sharing with you guys exactly how to use keepa and to explain to you guys exactly why it is the most important software that you need as an Amazon seller, in my opinion, without Keepa, my business would literally be nowhere. And this software honestly will help you avoid bad products. So if you want to ensure that you're choosing good products and that you're avoiding the bad ones, you need to make sure that you have the software called Keepa. All right, guys. So the first thing that I'm going to be showing you how to do is to actually sign up for your Keepa account. So you can literally type Keepa in Google and it should pop up right here. But I will also leave the link down below so you guys can access it directly. So if you click on the Keepa link, so you need to go directly to their website first. So you're going to go to Keepa.com. So the first thing that you need to do is actually register and create an account. So you're going to press on register. Then you're going to click register here. You're going to create a username, password, email, etc. Press register. So go through that process. And then once it's like officially registered and everything, you can log into the account. All right. And so once your account is officially logged in, it's going to look like this. So you're going to go over here to where your name is. You're going to press over here on subscriptions. So this is how the page looks. So you want to make sure that you go and subscribe to the premium Keepa account. So I actually pay for it annually. So I pay 189 euros per year for this software. If you choose to pay for it monthly, it's 19 euros, which is around $23 Canadian for any Canadians that are wondering. But basically, you're just going to go ahead and sign up. It's going to obviously look a little bit different than mine, but you're going to sign up, put your credit card, officially pay for the premium account. And then once you've done that, you actually need to go ahead and add the Keepa Chrome extension. A lot of people will make the mistake of downloading the Keepa Chrome extension, but then they don't go and make an, an actual premium account with Keepa to ensure that you actually have the premium data. So just downloading the Chrome extension will not allow you to use Keepa properly. So make sure to start by creating the premium account and then downloading the Chrome extension. So this right here is the Keepa Chrome extension. I'm going to link it down below as well. So you'll have the link for their website where you sign up for premium and then the Keepa Chrome extension that you need to add to Chrome. So for anyone that is selling on Amazon, I highly recommend to make sure that you have Chrome as your main browser so that you can be able to link all of these Chrome extensions to your account. What this will essentially do is it will actually add Keepa directly to your Amazon listings. So any listing that you look at on Amazon, you'll be able to see that there is a Keepa chart integrated into it. All right, guys. So this is a random Amazon listing that I have that I found. It's actually a product that I found using tactical arbitrage. I'm going to use this product as an example in this video to show you guys what a good Keepa graph looks like. So this listing is not a listing that I've created myself. This is just just a listing that already exists on Amazon for anyone that doesn't really know how online arbitrage works. That's pretty much what this business model is. We're essentially selling known products that exist already in the market. So this product is not a brand that I've created. You know, it's just a random brand that exists already. And you can actually buy this product for around $6.99, I believe, at Canadian Tire. So for any Canadians, this is an example of a product that you can buy for a lot less expensive. So for $6.99, and then you can sell it for pretty much double the price on Amazon. And that's essentially what the business model is and so we are actually piggybacking on top of listings that already exist so i didn't create this title i didn't add these images i did not add this description but i can sell this product if i wanted to so if i want to sell this product i can add myself to the listing and then i just need to send the stock to amazon to a fulfillment center so as you will be sourcing which is basically you looking for products one of the main things that we're going to be using to determine if a product is actually good is our keepa graph and so as i explained once you add the chrome extension you're going to see that the Keepa graph will then be integrated into every single listing on Amazon. And if I go press on any other listing, so if I'm like, okay, well, I, maybe I should check this variation. I can go click on any other listing that exists on Amazon and you will see that the Keepa graph will appear here. So this is essentially how the Keepa graph works. This is how it will be integrated into your listings. And then we will essentially use these graphs to analyze the history of these listings to determine if it's going to be a good purchase or not. All right. So we're going to start with this one here. So this is the first product that I showed you guys. So I'm going to start by explaining some of the key features with Keepa, the main features that we will use pretty much to analyze these products. All right. So the first thing that I want you guys to understand are the different colors. So first of all, we're going to be looking at the top chart. So look at the top chart here the first chart there's three different charts here but we're gonna we're gonna start with the top one the first thing that i want you guys to look at is the pink color so basically the pink color actually represents the price so this is how i like to explain it so the pink represents the price so actually 
what I want you to, to remember is that pink and purple represent the price. So if ever you forget what colors represent what, you can always see them here. So purple here is new prices. Pink is price, but when there's a buy box, um, green is the sales rank, etc. So that so essentially that's how you're going to remember what each color means. But we're going to start with the pink line. So pink represents the price, but specifically when there is a buy box. And so if you guys understand what the buy box is, so this is literally the buy box right here. Whenever there's a buy now button, um, that's essentially what the buy box is. And you guys will see some listings that don't actually have a buy box. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they are bad listings. It just means that there's no buy box. And typically when there's no buy box, there will be generally a bit less sales than a listing that has a buy box. So seeing a pink line is generally good but it also does not mean that the product won't sell because i have plenty of products that don't have buy boxes that still sell quite well and so if there's no buy box the line will actually be purple so you see here if i take my mouse off of the graph it's generally a pink line that means that this listing has had a buy box for the past three months so we're actually looking at the past three months of the history of this listing so you can see that there has been a buy box for the last three months which is a good sign but again it doesn't necessarily matter if there's no buy box because they can sell without one and so number two we're going to look at the green line so green line represents the sales rank and so for anybody that doesn't understand the sales rank if you scroll down to the bottom of any listing on amazon where it says additional information you will see a bsr slash sales rank we can use both of those terms so it's bsr which is best sellers rank or the sales rank and so what the sales rank is it's basically just a number that will determine how popular a product is so for for example, this product here, its sales rank is number 227 in tools and home improvement. So also all products on Amazon will be classified into a certain category and then it will be classified by sales rank. And so the lower the sales rank, the more popular it is. That's the main thing that you need to understand. And so if we're going to use that logic of the lower the sales rank, the more popular the product is, we ideally would want the sales rank to be low. So I want you to keep that in your mind. So you want the sales rank to be low. And so if you actually look at the graph over here on this side, this represents the sales rank. So this side of the graph represents the sales rank. So as we can see, the green line is going up and down based on how popular it is with the sales rank. And so generally the logic that we use with Keepa is that every single time the sales rank goes down, it actually represents sales. You want to see the green line going down a lot of times and very consistently and this represents sales. So if I zoom in the graph to past three months, if you literally put your mouse on the green line and, and follow it, you can see it's dropping down. So if the sales rank was at 634 and then all of a sudden drops down to 397, if you think about it logically, if the sales rank represents the popularity of the product, if the sales rank goes down, it means that the product became more popular. And then if you ask yourself, well, why does why would a listing become more popular? The reason is because there was a sale. So a listing will actually become more popular on Amazon the more sales that it gets. And so the logic that we're going to be using is that every time the sales rank goes down, it actually represents a sale. So essentially what you could kind of do to get an estimate of how many sales are happening per month is basically you can just look at the last month, literally count how many times the sales rank has gone down and that's essentially your estimate of how many sales there are per month. And so instead of literally counting every single time the sales rank drops down, you can actually see on the bottom of Keepa right here. So if you look at the bottom, it will actually tell you there are 41 drops per month in the last three months. So this is actually an average of the last 90 days. So approximately 41 drops happened in the last three months. And this can give you kind of an idea of approximately how many units sell per month. And what's really cool too with Keepa is that you can actually see the full life of the listing. So if I wanted to expand it even further, I can go to the last 3,400 days. And this is really important because typically whatever happens in the past is likely to happen in the future. And this is the logic that a lot of people use when they're trying to analyze the behavior of something so we're essentially analyzing the behavior of this listing um, was it selling consistently was the price consistent so to keep it kind of simple um, what i would recommend to do is to look generally i mean obviously you should look at the full life of the listing to try to identify any trends of seasonality or whatever um, but generally you want to look at current information so look at the last year see what it looks like look at the last three months, see what it looks like, and look at the last month, see what see what it looks like. If you can see that in the past three months, this product has been selling quite consistently and at a stable price, I like to say stable price because 
if you can see that for example 12.98 is a profitable price and then if i can go back and check for the past three months what the price was i can see that it's generally been at around $13 and there were some times where the price jumped up a little bit by a dollar or two which is actually good because that would essentially make it more profitable. So a Keepa graph that looks like this is kind of generally what you want to look for, something that has a lot of green drops and a very consistent stable price. So you want the pink slash purple line to be generally straight. So if I look at the last year of this listing, the price actually looks a lot less stable, right? <laughs> Which is kind of scary. That's usually a red flag. So this listing here, the past three months, or basically since June, it has been selling quite consistently at around $13, which looks really good. However, before that, it was sell at one point it was selling for $12 and then it was at $12.73. So when it was at a higher price, that's obviously a good thing, right? So I would say about maybe since April, it's been doing quite well. It's been quite consistent, right? But however, in February to April, this product was priced at $10.97. And so if you actually think about this product, this product is actually probably a seasonal product. It seems to be like a product that collects damp air or something. I don't really understand how it actually works. But if you look at the trend of the different months based on the seasons so as you can see if you look at the green line so i try to remember the logic of the lower the sales rank the more popular and the more the more it's selling so if the sales rank is going up so the green line if the green line is going up what does that mean that means that the product is essentially becoming less popular so we can clearly see by looking at the past year that this product was selling very well you know october november december and then it gradually the green line was gradually the trend of the green line is gradually going up so during basically from december up until may this product was not selling as much and i think we can kind of logically understand that okay during winter this product probably doesn't sell as well this is something that you will notice a lot in the canadian market because obviously a lot of the provinces in in canada you know we have winter so during winter a lot of products will no longer be as popular so typically what will happen is the green line will significantly go like jump up during the winter seasons and then it will go back down as of like April, May. That's typically a trend that will happen for seasonal products that are only popular during one season. And in the U.S., this is not as dramatic because, you know, there are some states in the U.S. that are warm. There's like Florida and California where, you know, it's warm all year round. So this is actually something that happens more commonly in the Canadian market. But there are still some trends that you can notice for seasonal products in the U.S. For example, Christmas stuff like Christmas advent calendars or Halloween costumes. These things will typically only sell during certain times of the year. And being able to identify these trends with Keepa is super, super, super important. And that's essentially the whole point of us being able to see the history of a listing is to identify those trends. And so as you can see, this product likely does not sell as much during the winter as we can see based on the sales rank. And that's essentially probably why the price went down. I'm sure that as of November, you can see as of November, it starts to go up and the price starts to go down. So the price started declining because people were like, oh my God, I need to get rid of this product. I need to sell it out. And so during the winter, the, the, the price actually dropped down to $10 or $11 because everyone was essentially trying to just sell them out or liquidate them. But then the price actually went back up to $12 or $13 and it's been staying at around $13 ever since. This is just really interesting to be able to see the history of a listing, the price of a listing, and to try to understand the relationship between the sales rank and the price, like to understand why the price went down. So a listing like this, even though the price has, hasn't been super stable because of this little chunk over here, I actually wouldn't be afraid of this listing because we know exactly why the price went down. We know that the price went down specifically because it was during winter and nobody was buying it as much. So everyone was probably just trying to sell out their stock. So because the price was at a, at a nice price over here and it only really went down during winter but then it was back up to a nice price uh the following summer it's like it's not a horrible keep a graph because we know why the price went down you know and now the price has been quite stable for the past three months so this is an example of a, of a Keepa graph that's not perfect, but we were able to kind of identify why the price went down and we have a reason for that and it makes sense. So this is something that I would recommend to only really sell during, you know, maybe from May or starting mid-April 
pretty much up until November, December, or it was really in January when it really stopped selling quite consistently. But this is definitely a product that will primarily sell during the summer seasons. And so this is essentially why we use Keepa. It's to basically identify these trends to understand if this product will sell all year round or if it's a seasonal product to understand if the price has been consistent or stable. As long as you can find a product that has been selling consistently at a consistently profitable price, make sure that this $13 is at a profitable price for you if it's not then obviously it's not a good product but make sure that you're checking off those boxes make sure it's been selling consistently and it's at a consistently stable price and so i'm actually going to go to the second product that we looked at quickly earlier because the keep a graph is kind of the opposite of what you want to find so this product here is another product from the same brand but um, now i want to talk to you guys about the color orange so orange represents Amazon. So if ever you see a listing where Amazon is currently selling this product, you definitely want to stay away from it. However, in this example, Amazon was selling this product pretty much up until the beginning of September. So typically my rule is like, I don't want to see Amazon on a listing for at least six months to maybe one year. I mean, ideally the less orange, the better. And if you can avoid any listing that has orange on it, that's really good. So a listing that has zero orange is probably the best possible scenario. However, we're not always that lucky. Sometimes, you know, you'll still have really good products that Amazon used to sell. So don't necessarily completely dismiss products where Amazon used to sell them because sometimes you can still find good ones but the less orange the better and so this product here Amazon was selling this product at 1668 1669 and they were selling it basically for the past couple of months if I expand it to a year ago we can actually see that that Amazon was selling this product pretty much the whole year they weren't in stock during October a little bit in January and now they've been out of stock for about half of a month so about 15 days let's say so a listing like this is quite risky because if Amazon has sold this product in the past, it's very likely that they will come back on the listing, especially if we can see that Amazon has been there for almost the full entire year. The logic you want to use is imagine you were to restock this product in January and then Amazon comes in stock right here and they sold this product up until September. So if you would have had inventory in stock as of January and then Amazon came in stock for pretty much the whole year, you wouldn't have been able to make sales pretty much up until September. So your inventory would have been stuck sitting at Amazon collecting storage fees. And honestly, that's just not a good idea. So a listing like this, I would definitely stay away from. Ideally, you want to look for listings that look a little bit more like this product here that we initially started with. So something like this is a lot safer. This is ideally what you want to look for. If I go to the full life of this listing, Amazon has never sold this product, not once. So this is a good sign. Like something like this is a really good sign and this is ideally what you want to find. So to summarize one last time, you want the green line to have a lot of movement. You want the pink and purple line to be very stable. So ideally as straight as possible. And then you want there to be little to no orange. And that's essentially what you want to look for in a Keepa graph. All right, guys, so I'm going to end the video at that. I really hope that this video was helpful. There's a lot more features that Keepa offers, but I wanted to kind of keep it simple for my first video. If you guys want anything more specific for Keepa, please let me know. I will definitely make a part two of the Keepa tutorial and I'll show you guys a couple more features that Keepa offers. But I really hope that this video helps you guys understand Keepa a little bit better and use it to make sure that you're buying good products. So I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching my videos. And if you found it helpful, please leave me a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video.